Chris T here from the depot bringing you another informational video about the world of Run 8. Today and over the next couple of videos we're going to cover signal rules for the three main Run 8 regions. The former seaboard coastline of the A-Line, the ex-New York Central and Conrail lines of the Mohawk and Selkirk region, and the BNSF Santa Fe signals of the expansive SoCal area. Today's topic will be the A-Line and the signaling of the SCL. We'll look at different signal types, rules, relevant signage, and other aspects needed to operate a train safely on this territory. Let's go ahead and get started. For today's video on the former SCL signals, we'll be bouncing all over the A-Line. Not all locations will have the same signal types, number of signal heads, signs, and otherwise various situations in which these different signal types will appear. Before we dive into these signals, we need to define a couple of terms. Aspect and Indication. The aspect is the physical look of the signal. The red, yellow, and flashing green lights shown here are all part of this signal's aspect. This is how the signal will be displayed in the field for the train crew. The indication is what the signal is telling you to do or the meaning of the signal. Whether a signal is telling you to slow down for a stop signal or to cross over at the next switch, that is what its indication is. These terms will come up very frequently and are used almost daily on the railroad. Keeping that in mind, let's take a look at our first signal. We're here at the north end of the Jacksville Amtrak station at a control point most commonly referred to as Jack's Amtrak. The signal displayed is clear. It's one of the most basic signals you can encounter in all of railroading. The indication for clear simply states to proceed at maximum authorized speed. That's it. You have at least two clear blocks ahead of you, so keep it moving. This signal is also a clear, but here it is represented on a dwarf signal. A dwarf signal is a smaller signal that is usually down at ground level and protects moves out of yards or industrial tracks where the speed is low. Most of the time, dwarf signals will convey a slow speed aspect, but sometimes, such as this, it can display aspects with higher speeds. The indication is the same, it's just that the aspect has been scaled down. We'll try to cover dwarf signals when applicable. Here, at the Seminole Connection at Jacksonville, is an approach medium aspect. Approach medium's indication is to proceed, approaching the next signal not exceeding medium speed. Medium speed on the A-line is 30 miles per hour. This signal means one of two things is happening ahead. Either you're going through a turnout or crossing over and must be down to medium speed for that turnout, or you'll be stopping ahead in two signals. The approach medium signal can be used in place of an advanced approach, which we'll cover later. Either way, you need to start reducing your speed to pass the next signal at 30 mile per hour or less. Alright, now we're starting into signals that have three heads on them. The first of which we'll cover is medium approach medium. This looks a lot like the approach limited aspect, but that red light on top changes all of that. Medium approach medium's indication is proceed at medium speed through turnouts, crossover, sidings, and over power operated switches, then proceed approaching the next signal not exceeding medium speed. Now that's a lot of information, but it's fairly simple really. It means you do 30 mile an hour until you clear all the switches in the interlocking, then you can bring your speed back up. But you must be back down to 30 mile an hour by the next signal. You'll encounter this quite often on the A-line single track portions when going into a siding and coming right back out the other side. In addition to this, most of the A-line sidings have a maximum speed of 30 mile per hour, so the speed isn't really much of an issue. Next is medium clear. Medium clear is a variation of the clear signal and merely states that you're crossing over through a turnout and you'll keep on moving. Medium clear's indication is proceed at medium speed through turnouts, crossover, sidings, and overpower operated switches, then proceed at maximum authorized speed. One thing to mention about these speeds is that they apply for the entire train length. These are not head end only speeds. Once your entire train clears the interlocking, you can then pick it back up to track speed. Now we're going to pick up the pace a bit with the approach limited aspect. Approach limited means to proceed approaching the next signal not exceeding limited speed. 
Limited speed on the former SCL is 45 miles per hour. This simply means that you'll be crossing overhead at 45 miles per hour, so you need to get your speed down before that next signal. This particular signal is at Sutel Road, which is the northbound distance signal to Dinsmore, which we're going to move up to now. We're up at Dinsmore, and now we're looking at the limited clear aspect. Limited clear's indication is as follows. Proceed at limited speed through turnouts, crossovers, sidings, and overpower operated switches, then proceed at maximum authorized speed. So once your train is all crossed over, not exceeding 45 miles per hour, you can return to track speed. It's fairly simple. Not all crossovers like Dinsmore are good for 45 miles per hour though, so it's important to pay attention and remember what the signal is telling you to do. Now we're literally going to slow down a bit. This signal and the next few signals we're going to discuss will cover slow speeds. This signal is approach slow. Approach slow means to proceed approaching the next signal not exceeding slow speed. Slow speed is 15 miles per hour. You can find this signal throughout the A-line, especially around the Honeymoon Y area of Jacksonville. This aspect is slow clear. Slow clear is almost the same as medium clear or limited clear, except for its speed. Slow clear's indication is proceed at slow speed through turnouts and crossover sidings and over power operated switches then proceed at maximum authorized speed another fairly simple signal that lets you know that once you clear the interlocking plant you can get back up to track speed this is what slow clear looks like on a dwarf signal again low to the ground but this time with only one green lamp lit the indication is the same however this particular dwarf is at the control point at the north end of moncrief yard now we're going to start looking at signals that deal with preparing to stop your train. These are some of the most important signals on the railroad and, to be honest, your life and the lives of your co-workers depend on you obeying these signals. The first signal we'll look at is the advance approach. The indication for advance approach is to proceed prepared to stop at the second signal. This means that you have two clear blocks ahead, but you'll be stopping in two signals. Usually, you'll have an approach signal following this one. As I mentioned before, during the approach medium segment, the approach medium signal may replace this depending on how the railroad goes about things. A good rule of thumb for the advanced approach is that you want to start getting your train down to medium speed, or 30 mile per hour, before you come to the next signal. This will allow you to be in control of your train when you eventually come upon the stop signal ahead. This next one is very important. It's the approach signal. Approach means to proceed, prepare to stop at the next signal. Trains exceeding medium speed must immediately begin reduction to medium speed as soon as the engine passes the approach signal. It's time to start getting your train down to a controllable speed to stop at the next signal, whether it be to get into dynamic or to throw on some air to get slowed down. The approach signal will not always be preceded by an approach medium or an advanced approach, so it's imperative that you begin taking action as soon as you see the approach signal. The quicker you react to the signal and start getting your speed down, the better off you'll be when it comes time to stop. Medium approach acts just like a regular approach, except that it means you'll be crossing over or making a diverging move through a turnout and then stopping at the next signal. The indication for medium approach reads like this. Proceed at medium speed through turnouts, crossover, sidings, and over power operated switches, then proceed prepared to stop at the next signal. So again, start getting your train speed down while making your way into the siding or crossover, keeping in mind that you have a stop signal ahead. We're back up at the honeymoon Y for the slow approach aspect. As you might have guessed, this signal means we need to do slow speed while coming into the next signal prepared to stop. Slow approach's indication is to proceed at slow speed through turnouts, crossover, sidings, and over power operated switches, then proceed prepared to stop at the next signal. A very straightforward signal dealing with low speed situations. This is the slow approach aspect on a dwarf. The solid yellow light conveys the same information as the red over red over yellow aspect of the slow approach on a mast or signal bridge. Slow speed, prepare to stop at the next signal. The 
This is the most important signal on the railroad, the stop signal. Stop. That's it. I don't even have an indication to give you because that's as simple as it comes. Just stop. Do not pass this signal. Going by this signal without permission means you'll be pulled out of service and could potentially hurt or kill someone. However, you can receive permission by a stop signal from a train dispatcher after he verbally talks you by it. In most cases, they can't give you a light for some reason. Maybe there's a failure or a broken rail. Maybe there's a train on the other side of the interlocking and he has to talk you by at restricted speed, which we'll cover here shortly. Either way you look at it, make sure you do not pass this signal. Next up, we'll cover a very, very important signal. One that carries just as much weight as the stop signal, the restricting. Before I give you the indication of this signal, I'd like to point out that the different railroads have different meanings of restricted speed. Restricted speed is the speed that allows for you to stop within half the range of vision short of other trains, rail cars, broken rails, and property line switches, on-track equipment, and signals. This is what restricted speed looks like on a seaboard coastline dwarf. Now where it gets interesting is what each railroad has is their maximum speed for restricted speed. For personal example, Norfolk Southern lists their maximum speed for restricted speed at 20 miles per hour. This has to do with their cab signaling system on the former Pennsylvania Railroad territory. On CSX, 15 mile per hour is the maximum speed for restricted speed. The issue is, you need to be at a speed that allows you to stop short of something on the tracks. Because doing restricted speed is so important, here's a scenario for you. Let's say we're on an engine leaving the yard. You come around the corner on restricted speed and you see this. How fast do you think you need to be going to stop before hitting these cars? 10 mile per hour would be the max speed for the yard, but is that slow enough? Restricted speed is a judgment call. You have to be in control of your train, and just because the rule says you can do 15 or 20 miles per hour doesn't mean you should. Just be aware of the territory you're on, how heavy your train is, and how long it is to determine just how fast you should be going on restricted speed. Now that we've covered the main signal aspects and indications on the A-line, let's take a look at some signs and other situations involving signals. First, let's look at a grade plate or a G plate. When a signal displaying a red aspect has a grade plate, it means the train does not have to stop at this signal, but must proceed at restricted speed. This plate indicates the signal is on a grade and that tonnage trains do not need to stop due to the risk of stalling. Similar to the grade plate is the permissive plate or a P plate. This plate is present on intermediate signals when stopping isn't required, but you must proceed at restricted speed. The permissive plate functions in a similar fashion to a number plate mounted to an intermediate signal. This is a number plate. This sign denotes the mile post at which the intermediate signal sits. Sometimes it may also have the track number for which it governs. A red signal with a number plate functions just like one with a grade plate or a permissive plate. Trains do not need to stop at this signal, but they must pass it at restricted speed. This sign is called stop and check. The rule for stop and check reads, stop and check position of drawbridge, spring switch, derails, or gates protecting railroad crossings. If way is clear and drawbridge, spring switch, derails, or gate are in the proper position, proceed at restricted speed. This is mostly relevant to the four movable bridges on the A-line. This sign only applies if a red signal is received at the drawbridge's home signal. It must be treated like a stop signal until permission is given to inspect the bridge ahead. The situation we're looking at right now involves a doll arm. The description of a doll arm is one or more tracks intervene between the signal and the track governed by the signal. When more than one track intervenes, the number of doll arms with or without blue lights is increased accordingly. This means that the high mass signal governs the track on the far left, not the track immediately to its left. That track is protected by the dwarf on the ground. Doll arms can be found in multiple places on the A-line, especially on the southern half of the territory. And before we close out today's video, let's take a look at some placeable line side signs you can find on the A-line.
Here we'll look at the first sign you'll come to when approaching a speed restriction or a conditional stop sign. This is a warning sign. This sign means you are approaching a temporary speed restriction or a conditional stop sign that is protecting a work zone. Usually these signs are placed between two to two and a half miles from the next sign ahead. Once you see this sign, you must begin reducing your speed or be preparing to stop ahead. This solid yellow sign is a temporary speed restriction sign. The sign will be located at the beginning of a temporary speed restriction that is less than the maximum authorized speed for the track it governs. In most cases, it will be placed to the right of the track it is for. A temporary speed restriction can be found in a bulletin, or in our case here at the depot, on the operations center. Make sure you check and see if there are any active speed restrictions on the territory you'll be running on. A very important sign that you can find trackside is the conditional stop sign. This solid red sign indicates the start of a work zone where maintenance of way employees are in charge of the track and may be fouling. The work zone is under the control of a foreman who is responsible for the track between these signs. Trains approaching a conditional stop sign must call ahead to the foreman in charge to get permission through his work limits. Trains must also be prepared to stop at the sign if they do not have permission or cannot get a hold of the foreman. The foreman will give a train permission through his limits at a speed that he dictates depending on what is happening within the work site. Remember, passing a conditional stop sign without permission is the same as passing a stop signal and can have disastrous consequences if done so. Once you have come to the end of a temporary speed restriction or a work zone, you'll find the resume speed sign. The resume speed sign is solid green, and once the rear of your train has passed this sign, you may resume track speed. As with the other signs, it will be to the right of the track it governs. The last sign we'll look at is the blue flag. A blue flag is used to protect employees who may be working around cars, locomotives, and MOW equipment. These signs can frequently be found around engine houses, car shops, and some industries. It can be used in the sim to show tracks where engines and cars are being serviced and are not quite ready or at industries where employees may be loading and unloading cars and may be on or about the equipment. Well, this concludes our video on signals and signs of the CSXA line. Hopefully you guys learned something new and can put some of this knowledge to use on your next run. Keep an eye out for our next video where we cover the signals and signs of the Southern California region featuring BNSF signaling system. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you out there. Take care, guys.